I mentioned in our last lesson the importance in musical form of what I call progressions. We've already mentioned progression in a previous lesson, but there's more to say. By progression, I don't mean a series of chords, as in harmonic progression. Here I'm referring to something more general, a sense of formal progression. This can be defined as a passage where something in the music progresses incrementally. For instance, in the first example from our previous lesson, the texture gets gradually lower and thicker. The piano adds octaves when the cello comes in and then drops into the lowest register at the end. Here's another example. In this example, the melodic peaks get gradually higher. If you chart the highest notes in each phrase of the melody, in measures 2, 4, 5, and 7, they form a gradually rising line. This technique is extremely common. Other examples of formal progressions include a long crescendo, harmony becoming gradually more dissonant, register getting lower or higher. Almost any dimension of the music can progress in this way. If you want to make the overall effect more dramatic, you can combine various parameters at the same time. For example, a rising line and a crescendo. Note that progressions don't have to be strictly linear. In fact, strictly linear progressions can become too simplistic, too obvious. For example, between the D in measure 4 and the F in measure 5 of the above example, there's a distance of a third. This is not big enough to feel like a change of register, and therefore the F still feels like part of the same progression. Also, the successive peaks are not spaced entirely regularly. For example, measure 7 includes both the G and the high A. These details create enough uncertainty to maintain the listener's interest since they're not 100% predictable. Progressions provide the composer a way to create a sense of direction, avoiding stasis. Once the listener notices that music is progressing in a given direction, it creates expectations and suspense, and thus involves the listener more actively. Once a progression has begun, there'll normally come a point where it reaches a limit, often with a climax. Climax creates a moment of special intensity, fulfilling the listener's expectations. A climax is a kind of focus point where the idea in question arrives at its maximum intensity. Following a climax, the music usually either fades away or moves on to another idea. In fact, it's an interesting principle of musical form that a change that might feel arbitrary in the middle of a phrase, or a section of the piece, can sound justified after a climax. Listen to these two examples. They both start off with material from our previous example, but now there are two different possible continuations. Both lead to the same contrasting idea, but not in the same way. Which one is more convincing? The second one, obviously. In the first one, the new idea arrives completely unexpected. It sounds like it would not have made any difference if it had arrived a bit earlier or a bit later. In the second version, the crescendo, as well as the little repetition I've added to the climax in measure 9, create expectations for the listener that something important is going to happen. 
So when the new idea does arrive in measure 9, it seems prepared. It would definitely be less convincing if it had arrived a few bars earlier. And this is one goal of a really good composer. Important musical events should not sound arbitrary. Progressions can rise in intensity, as in the above example, or they can fall, for example leading to a fade-out at the end of a phrase. At the end of progressions, usually something special will happen, marking it as the culmination. For example, a climax can be accented by adding something new, or by an important change in the musical material, as in the last example. Similarly, when a progression goes down, say towards a cadence, it's a good idea to mark the end in some way. For example, the orchestration can change, or the harmony can do something special. The point here is that a progression is a way of leading the listener, over time, towards a special moment, high or low. When the special moment arrives, the composer needs to mark it so the listener feels that the goal has been achieved. Music is not a democracy where everything is equal. Some moments lead toward others, and some moments stand out as turning points. Progression is a powerful way to involve the listener by creating expectations and then, over time, fulfilling them. The things the composer most often needs to work on in a progression are 1. The duration too long and it becomes monotonous, too short and the culmination will be tepid. Two, the balance between predictability and fantasy. The overall pattern should be predictable, but not to the point where there's no interest in hearing how it plays out. In our next lesson, we'll address an interesting question. Does every piece need a climax?